abolishes the office of presidency and decrees that the armed forces must swear fealty no longer to the state, but to himself alone. Within Germany, all political power is now vested in Hitler, who is determined to tolerate no opposition. To keep his subjects in thrall, Hitler will rely heavily on the secret police force, the Gestapo. Valued by Hitler. 
Hitler for his absolute unquestioning loyalty. Although having the appearance of a timid and hesitant bureaucrat, Hitler was in private intensely ambitious. He had grandiose plans for his SS organization. In particular, he desired to bring the Gestapo within the undisputed province of the SS. This prospect was not one which Goering or the SA regarded with favor. But Himmler was an adept in the arts of backstairs intrigue, who never hesitated to use bribery, blackmail, intimidation, or even murder to gain his ends. Twice, Rudolf Diels, the unprincipled opportunist whom Goering had put in charge of the Gestapo, fled abroad in fear of his life. Meanwhile, the cold and fearful German citizenry witnessed daily scenes of outrage. Jews and Jewish establishments were primary targets for violence. But the legalized thugs of the SA assaulted or arrested passers-by at will, almost at random. Their victims were hauled off to makeshift torture chambers in old basements, or to one of the SA's improvised concentration camps.
a vast network of spies and informers. Its clerks laboriously built up an extraordinary collection of files on all and sundry. Gestapo operations were marked by suddenness and secrecy. Its interrogators were notorious for their well-practiced brutality. Gestapo agents possessed arbitrary but unchallengeable powers of arrest, incarceration, and execution. It was of this institution that Heinrich Himmler said, we do not expect to be loved by too many. Although the Gestapo achieved its greatest notoriety under Himmler, the chief of police, it was originally the creation of another of Hitler's lieutenants, Hermann Goering. In the elections of January 1933, the National Socialists won sufficient seats in the Reichstag, Germany's parliament, for Hitler to be voted chancellor, heading a coalition government. Goering became minister of Prussia, the largest German state, and moved rapidly to bring its police force under his own direct control. Large numbers of fanatical Hitler supporters were drafted in to swell its ranks. Goering was soon able to mount a furious campaign against the opposition parties. Following a second election in March 1933, Goering used his police to arrest some deputies and to prevent others from entering the parliament building. Under these intimidating constraints, the Reichstag passed the Enabling Act. By this momentous and irrevocable transfer of power, the fragile German democracy was extinguished and Hitler unable to move by decree alone. For the time being, Hitler still required the president's assent to any new laws, but Hindenburg was old, malleable, and nearly senile. Within months, all opposition political parties were outlawed, strict censorship imposed, and the trade unions dissolved. During this turbulent period, as a new order stamped itself upon Germany, the Gestapo came into being. The old Prussian police had had a small political section responsible for monitoring agitators and extremists. Goering expanded this section and transferred it to extensive new premises at 8 Prince Albrechtstrasse, formerly an arts and crafts college. There, in April 1933, Goering established the headquarters of his specialized new police unit. It was a post office clerk, needing a word that could fit on a franking stamp, who suggested the name Secret State Police, or Geheime Staatspolizei, conveniently shortened to Gestapo. Although it quickly gained a fearsome reputation, the infant Gestapo was itself rent by alarming schisms, stemming from the violent and frequently murderous contention between factions vying for control within it. These factions were drawn principally from the SS and the SA. The brown-shirted SA, or Sturmabteilung, or Storm Detachments, were a loosely organized, unofficial private army led by Ernst Rohr, for many years a close associate of Hitler. During Hitler's long ascent to power, the ragged cohorts of the SA had provided crude but invaluable assistance on the streets of Germany. Their ranks were now swollen to well over three million men, and despite their previous support, Hitler viewed with concern the possibility of a challenge to his authority by so large and volatile a body of men. By contrast, the far smaller SS, Schutzstaffel, or guard echelons, was tightly disciplined and commanded by Heinrich Himmler, valued by Hitler for his absolute unquestioning loyalty. Although having the appearance of a timid and hesitant bureaucrat, Hitler was in private intensely ambitious. He had grandiose plans for his SS organization. In particular, he desired to bring the Gestapo within the undisputed province of the SS. This prospect was not one which Goering or the SA regarded with favor. But Himmler was an adept in the arts of backstairs intrigue 
never hesitated to use bribery, blackmail, intimidation, or even murder to gain his ends. Twice, Rudolf Diels, the unprincipled opportunist whom Goering had put in charge of the Gestapo, fled abroad in fear of his life. Meanwhile, the cold and fearful German citizenry witnessed daily scenes of outrage. Jews and Jewish establishments were primary targets for violence. But the legalized thugs of the SA assaulted or arrested passers-by at will, almost at random. Their victims were hauled off to makeshift torture chambers in old basements, or to one of the SA's improvised concentration camps. Operational head of the Gestapo, 
visited the Soviet Union, where he'd been impressed by the method of Stalin's secret police, and particularly by the all-pervading system of informers. Under murder, Gestapo recruitment was accelerated. Eventually, its agents numbered many tens of thousands. And soon, there was no street or block of flats, no office or workplace, where the eyes and ears of the Gestapo did not reach. Usually, the informers were unpaid, but they enjoyed the heady sense of power over their fellow men. The realization spread that a denunciation to the Gestapo was often an effective method of settling a personal grudge or of opening the way to a promotion. Even children were, all unconsciously, brought in to serve the cause. The various national socialist youth movements enjoyed immense popularity, whilst insidiously and persistently inculcating a loyalty beyond that of the family. Parents could no longer be sure they were not being spied on by their own offspring. Anyways, my name is Daniel Fitzgerald. I post the second video for uh, the United Nations in New York, um, here in Ottawa, Canada. <clears throat> this, uh, these two videos that I'm going to post here in October are for uh, the Russian consulate, primarily the embassy and the ambassador of Russia to Canada, Ambassador Stepanov. In, within the context of the two videos is clear-cut evidence that our parliament and security have become Gestapo and SS indeed. The uh, statements in the uh, previous video that I did yesterday uh, by Julian Assange, this one here, the uh, Gestapo uh, documentary, which I'm going to throw in with my video. I hope that I'm not tampering with anybody's uh, lawful rights pertaining to these videos. But um, <clears throat> these videos, uh, both Julian and uh, the Gestapo documentary, as well as uh, some evidence in two books that I have, um, indicate that both my wife and I have been subject subjected to cloned German Reich Nazi policies, uh, not just used against my brothers and sisters, the Jewish race of that time, but also anyone who was against the state, anyone with any kind of evidence against Hitler or uh, or his cabinet ministers, anyone that was against the Hitler Reich. Uh, this is what people need to realize uh, was placed under 
surveillance by the Gestapo, the SS and the SA, um, and were subjected to uh, a psychological terror through covert operations, uh, you know, being followed by two men in an unmarked car, uh, or, you know, being followed by the creepo, or cripo as I call them. I don't like creepo, I prefer the term cripo. Um, Canada has adopted every one of these policies against my wife and I for 18 years, our children, our property, the police, uh, neo-Nazi skinheads, extraterrestrials, indeed attacked our boats uh, with their recruits. You listen to this video, I accidentally played it twice. I, I thought it was a full one full recording, but it wasn't. And I'm happy that I included uh, my friend and colleague, a Jew, fellow Jew, Simon Wiesenthal, in his statement about the murders of tomorrow today, referencing to gas cars. I'm happy that that I had in, that that uh, Gestapo documentary was interrupted by me uh, to include uh, Simon Wiesenthal's statement that he made in 1973-74, the first time um, at a Jewish college or university uh, in Europe. He also made the, this same statement uh, on his birthday. I think it was his 80th or 80 something 80th birthday in Los Angeles, where uh, Simon Wiesenthal Center, deemed by the fake Rabbi Marvin Heyer, who's a fake. Um, and he had mentioned it again at the podium in front of uh, former President Ronald Reagan or President Reagan and Nancy Reagan, uh, when he had mentioned at the end of his speech at the podium on his birthday in this auditorium, uh, which was televised. Uh, he had mentioned again what he had stated uh, in this video that uh, referring to the murders of tomorrow that may be born today. And I noted in that video on YouTube uh, at his birthday how Ronald Reagan's facial expressions when Simon Wiesenthal mentioned the murders of tomorrow that may be born today at his 80 some odd birthday. I noticed this significant change in Ronald Reagan's facial expression. Um, uh, an expression of what? Why? Why now? You know, a very serious change from a smiling Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan enjoying uh, uh, Simon Wiesenthal's uh, statement at the podium on his birthday. And the minute he mentioned that, Ronald Reagan's expression dropped. So this is just, you know, another point. Uh, Canada is a Nazi state, um, especially here in the capital of Ottawa. We have, what has happened here is what Heinrich Himmler did uh, when he became uh, chief of security for Adolf Hitler. Heinrich Himmler brought all of the security agencies in Germany under one umbrella, which means that they all work together to strangle dissidents, um, strangle the Jewish race, the gypsies, uh, and he, you see in the video where uh, the narrator mentions something about infiltration of religious churches, okay? Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> so here in Ottawa, we have uh, three, three different jurisdictions, or four, including a fifth one, which is supposed to keep its nose in Quebec, in Quebec, uh, across the Ottawa River. So my wife and I have been faced with five jurisdictions of a collective of security under one roof it whether federal provincial or local okay um they have all grouped together as a collective to attack us attack our iphone um along with the american their american nazi colleagues in the cia fbi the state department the white house these have all been attacking my wife and i okay um and it's been going on for 18 years. Uh, I will state here in this video that um, back in uh, uh, 2017, uh, my wife and I left Ottawa, Canada, Ontario, Canada, and we went to Crystal Beach, Ontario, Canada, which is right on Lake Erie, a very tiny community, um, you know, a one horse town, if you want to call it that where, uh, you know, security police were about uh, one scumbag in uniform per square 50 kilometers, okay? Before we left Ottawa to go to my mom's, um, we had not an iPhone, we had a, a Chinese manufactured 
a Pixie phone that my wife purchased at Loblaws. We paid $80 for it back then. When we were here with that phone prior to leaving, the phone was completely hacked. Um, our laptop was being hacked. We were being set up by the police and not and recruits. Uh, we were not just set up by uh, recruits. We were set up and pointed uh, and limited with intent to live in um, dwellings that the police controlled, okay? So that we could be attacked. So our, our uh, devices could be attacked, my laptop, our phone could be attacked by recruits, criminals of the police. And this is quite explained in the Gestapo video, which I played twice, um, that um, as the, the Gestapo had files on everyone in Sundry. They had recruited every kind of personality on the streets of Germany to keep the subjects in the files under surveillance, okay? They also stated, and this is a very important point, that loyalty to the Reich, uh, in the case of families, uh, where he had clearly mentioned that even the children of parents could keep their parents under surveillance. Okay, that's how powerful um, Hitler was, all right? Um, and so the same applies to us because our families never did anything. Our fa Some in our family criticized my wife and I, okay, wrongfully. Why? Because they knew out of fear that they could be placed under surveillance as well and that the government and the police could attack them um, because they're defending us. This is a clear-cut case of my wife's sister-in-law, Marianne Graham. <clears throat> when uh, my wife, when my sister-in-law, Marianne, who lives 3,000 miles from here, from Ottawa, um, started agreeing with us on the phone slightly about what happened to us and what they did to us. And she started agreeing with uh, government corruption. She started agreeing with a whole bunch of different uh, subject material referring to uh, corrupt, corrupted Canada's governments. Um, and then she started having problems. Um, for example, she had um, a, a BlackBerry that was provided to her by her employer at that time. Um, it was a company phone. And at that time, uh, my wife and I were in communication with her about our case on the telephone. Then uh, my sister-in-law at one point, uh, when we contacted her in BC, told us on the phone that, um, that she's in trouble because um, a whole bunch of messages were sent on her Blackberry to her boss her, the head of her company, from her, apparently. She declined and told her employer and her boss she did not send the head of the company uh, text or emails from the company-provided BlackBerry that she had, okay? Note that uh, my sister-in-law admitted to my wife and I over the course of years that uh, the location of her home that she bought in Clearwater, that it just so happens that an RCMP member is a neighbor, okay? What does this indicate? Well, it indicates that the RCMP run by Nazi skinhead Balds, because my wife and I witnessed them um, within the compound when I tried to deliver my murder report in 2009, that it was these bald characters that blocked us from providing Commissioner Elliott, who gave, me, gave us permission to come down there, from receiving my attempted murder report by neo-Nazi uh, uh, pale white tall skinheads in the East Detention Center in Toronto in 2008-9, okay? Um, so, you know, my sister-in-law was being hacked. She's also had problems with internet connections with her laptop. Um, she's had problems with her iPhones, okay? Um, because she is being hacked because there is a Canada-wide security cover-up um, of our case, okay? Any of our family members who got involved to help my wife and I to condemn the government, any one of our family members who would defend us against the government would be open to attacks from this collective Nazi security that has spread right across Canada. And this indeed has been going on. And, you know, you can listen again to the references in the video that I just played 
for the first, I don't know, 30 minutes of uh, the recording for the upload. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's been 18 years of surveillance for my wife and I. Now, referring back to the Pixie phone, um, if I may be so bold, um, we had that phone before we left Ottawa. It was badly hacked. They hacked it, damaged it. Um, it wasn't working properly. Um, for example, one time we're in the park. Now, with that phone, we were under contract um, with a company. I think it might have been Virgin Mobile. And we got something like uh, 10 gigs of data with the plan we had. And uh, we were in the park here in Ottawa um, where uh, there was an RCMP facility uh, about half a kilometer from us on the same side of the river um, that that fate that was the property was right next to the park and the path along the river okay and I didn't know this we didn't know this until later on but um, in that park with the pixie I tried to upload a video to YouTube I had lots of data for the video um, so what what the police here were doing was they were able to slow down the upload uh, to YouTube uh, and the slowing down of the upload would um, uh, use the same amount of data uh, as it would if the upload went really fast. I would use less data if the upload went really fast. Now that upload went on for four hours and the video was only half an hour, okay? They like to make the excuse, well, you know, a lot of people are using the internet, therefore, you know, if you try to upload a video at times to YouTube, it's going to take a long time because blah, blah, blah. That's not true. Not in our case. Okay. And what they were doing was they had hacked our Pixie phone and they realized that they could make me run out of data. Um, and thereby, once the data runs out, the upload will stop and then YouTube will cancel the upload. Okay. That's what they did. So... Um, our Pixie phone in 2017 here was badly being hacked from every direction of Nazis and security uh, in five different jurisdictions, including CSIS. And the American CIA had also played a part in this, according to uh, Julian Assange's opening statement to PACE, which is in the other video, which I will upload. Um, the freezing of bank accounts, that he stated that they froze his bank accounts. Uh, I just want to make reference to that because Justin Trudeau and his security froze the bank accounts illegally of uh, freedom protester organizers here uh, two years ago, okay? And that's very important because it shows that Canada adopted NATO policies. I've been saying all along that, that NATO and the United States has adopted uh, security policies that are the same, that these governments and their security are applying against innocent citizens. These are Nazi right policies, okay? And they're all applying them. And the fact that I had stated this to the Russian Federation in New York City on the telephone. I had stated this to the Chinese uh, mission to the UN in New York as well, as well as the Russians in New York, that NATO, NATO and the United States, Canada, Great Britain, uh, Germany, France being the main ones, have all, and Canada have all adopted this policy. You see, and it's proven because Julian Assange said in his opening statement at PACE after he was released, and I'll repeat it again, that they seized his bank accounts. Well, Trudeau and his security seized the bank accounts of the freedom protester organizers because I'm repeating this again because this is a very important point. And this is proof of what I had stated and what I had uh, accused Canada of to the UN, the Russian Federation in New York City, to the, to the Permanent Council, along with China, that, that NATO countries had adopted all the same policies Okay, so the policy used against Julian when they seized his bank accounts are this, is the same policy they used against the protesters here. Canada did that, and Trudeau's security seizing their bank accounts. So you know when I stated years ago to the Russian Federation in New York, their UN mission, and the Chinese, when I told them that NATO is with the United States are running Nazi SS policies against my wife and I. Um, in our case, and they're running Nazi policies against Russia using the Ukraine and Nazi uh, colo uh, neo-Nazi colonials armed to kill Russians and kill children, uh, kill people uh, who are under the command of Zelensky, 
when I state when I stated that uh, two years ago at the Russian embassy or three years ago now, I went up with my bicycle and my signs and on my signs it was very clear that I was accusing um, Ottawa's RCMP and the police of being Nazi SS officers, okay, a, a collective. The Russians saw my signs from their embassy. People driving by saw my signs. Um, and, and then after that, okay, uh, two years later, three, two and a half years later, uh, the House of Commons invites Zelensky uh, with all the members of the House of Commons, all parties inside the House, and a former SS Waffen, uh, a murderer of Jews, Poles, um, and all kinds of dissidents, Russians, and so on. Um, he is in the House of Commons as well, and they're all clapping for him. Uh, I had stated to the Russians, uh, because President Vladimir Putin decided to blame uh, the Canadian House Speaker, Mr. Roto, as being completely responsible uh, for that. No, he was not. Uh, so I tried to correct President Vladimir Putin by telling his, his mission in New York it was very dangerous for President Putin to take that position, that it was simply Speaker of the House Roto. Especially when common sense dictates that all 400 members of the House of Commons here clapped for this SS Waffen. None of them, not one of them, went to a computer in, in their offices in the House of Commons. No MPs did any of the parties. If they didn't know who he was and they didn't know what his background was, I don't know. If I was an MP in the House of Commons and my Prime Minister notified my opposition political leader that a war hero who fought the Russians was going to, was invited to the House of Commons and Trudeau and House Speaker Roto did not inform my par my opposition party leader of the identity of the person and the war in which he fought the Russians, then I would get on my computer in the House of Commons and punch in his name. And his name was Hunka. And if you punch Hunka's name into a computer, he pops right up on Google, okay, as an SS monster. Um, the Russians also pointed that out, by the way. The Russians did point out later on that all, all 400 of the House of Commons who claim that they did not know that Hunka was a former SS Waffen wanted, okay, for war crimes or suspected war crimes. Um, and none of them knew, okay? And none of them, not one of them, bothered to go on their computer. If they didn't know, and they really wanted to know who he was, they could have went to their computers and looked him up, okay? And the Russians pointed that out after I called the mission in New York, indicating to them that President Putin was wrong pertaining to his his uh, his first uh, position that Speaker Roto was alone. And this the, the government always does that. They always have a fall guy here, always. Okay? They always have a fall guy. They'll pay Roto millions of dollars in his bank account to take the rap. Okay? And of course, Trudeau and his Nazi government and the conservative Nazis, Melissa Landsman, here are all the Jews in the House of Commons. They all knew that, uh, that Trudeau was bringing some elderly guy who fought against the Russians. The Jewish MPs in the House of Commons, Melissa uh, Sturman Fuhrer Landsman and her other Jewish colleagues, both in the Liberal Party and the Conservatives, none of these people, these Jews who are related to me by blood, bothered? <laughs> To, to investigate? I saw her standing there, Melissa Landsman, clapping with Polly F. Smiles on their faces. You know, Zelensky knew. Trudeau knew who he was. Anybody with a brain would have figured out he didn't fight in World War I against the, against the uh, Russians, because the Russians were not in World War I. It was the Germans versus the West, for the most part, in World War I. He, was, he would have been only 10 years old, but all's well. He wasn't in the Korean War against uh, uh, North Korea, right? Because North Korea, by that time, the Hitler Reich had been defeated. <laughs> so it would have been quite obvious to all 400 MPs that this, uh, this uh, illegal, immigrated, Waffen-SS hunka uh, fought against the Russians with the Nazis, Okay. Um, it wouldn't have been so bad for Canada had he fought in the Wehrmacht, okay, the regular German army. But Canada's been giving uh, asylum or refugee status or uh, citizenship uh, to this Nazi for a long, long time. He was probably here in 1980 when Simon Wiesenthal was interviewed by, interviewed by the Fifth Estate 
because unlike the US Justice Department, Canada was dragging its heels on investigating how many Nazis escaped Germany, immigrating to Canada under false pretenses, you see. Well, Hanka was here then. He was here in 1980. And Simon Wiesenthal mentioned to Gabriel Kaplan, who was, I think, the Attorney General for the province of Ontario at the time, had mentioned the two had mentioned to each other, well, Simon mentioned to him, well, you know, I know of three Nazis, one in Vancouver, uh, there was a, a, two others somewhere in Canada, but both agreed not to release their names, okay? Hunka was probably, or could have been one of these, okay? So the government of Canada knew Hunka was a Nazi, they knew, um, they knew he was SS, okay? He'd been living in Canada for how long? And the government knew his name, and no government official in, in 35 years in the House of Commons or any civil servant happened to punch up his name on, on Google. Hunka. He even used his 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 name. You know, he didn't Im immigrate to Canada from Nazi Germany or Nazi Europe um, using a created fictitious name, neither. He used his name. This guy used his name. His name in the Waffen SS to get into Canada. That's the other thing. He didn't hide his name. Okay, so. You know, and I pointed out, uh, I warned the Russian Federation as well here that, and in New York, that um, what's happened here with the Palestinians is that Ned and Aki and the Israeli government knew from their sources here, from uh, MPs on Parliament Hill here, Jews, uh, and in other European countries, that the police had Nazified. And the government was supporting uh, secret Nazification of the police and 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 security and national security and the government brought in tried to bring in policies in support of of nazi security control strings over targeted citizens in the country especially those who would uh, be able to figure it all out unravel it all like i did and i'm the only person that actually has um so that's what they did and you know so you know, I'm not allowed to expose this truth. Um, the problem here is, is that my wife and I are still living here in exile and we're being followed by the police. I'm under surveillance again. My wife is under surveillance because of my uh, admission to this uh, this Nazi pipsqueak named Paul Liev and his SS Sturmenfuhrer Melissa Landsman, a Jewish female. Um, and, and the reason why, the reason why I'm calling Landsman a Nazi SS Sturmenfuhrer is because... Um, the Jewish community here, let me explain. Around 2017, when my wife and I arrived in Ottawa, um, one of the things I did was I contacted a Jewish synagogue uh, here, uh, and its rabbi leader was personal close friends with the former Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper. Um, I saw this rabbi on Parliament Hill with Harper standing next to him, lighting up a menorah. His name was Rabbi Reuben Balka. Okay, uh, very well known. And Ruben Balka was a, a member of the Conservative Party and close friends with Stevie Wonder, uh, another Nazi. So w when we got here, I wanted to approach the Jewish community and I wanted to warn them, okay, about uh, all the Nazi policies against my wife and I wanted to tell them about the attempted murder of our newborn child in BC in 2006 and how the government covered it all up uh, right up at the top levels of the federal government including opposition on Parliament Hill. I wanted to tell Ruben Balka about uh, the attacks against our boats named after Jacob in the Torah on the Richelieu River by neo-Nazi extraterrestrial balds in the Quebec Provincial Police, who, by the way, at that time, had a Nazi extraterrestrial pale white tall bald police chief, for which I caught Stephen, Prime Minister Stephen Harper in the media, in the news, along with, I believe it was Premier Pauline Marois, formerly of Quebec, in, in a news item, okay, on TV, where Harper, where, where Harper, her, and the, and the police chief of the Quebec Provincial Police were sitting together in seats, right next to each other. So here we had uh, Prime Minister Stephen, I love the Jews, Harper, uh, sitting on one end, 
And next to him in the middle was this neo-Nazi skinhead extraterrestrial bald of the provincial Quebec police who's bald uh, members of the police in St. Jean's Richelieu, Quebec on the Richelieu River were attacking our boat at nighttime, Jacob's Goshen, and behind the attacks of our boat, Jacob's Ladder, uh, that was in the boatyard, the first boat. Uh, and they had recruited, just as uh, the, uh, the documentary of the Gestapo indicates in this video, they had recruited uh, street gangs, um, some, a motorcycle gangster as well, and drug dealers to attack our boat, Jacob's Ladder, the first one in a marina while well, it was on blocks. This was consistent. Um, the police, uh, not, it was a Nazi pale white tall bald in plain clothes at the Le Col Quebec police station um, that took my wife and I's journal of these attacks and who was committing them, the marina, one of the marina owners, uh, and a hell's angel from from uh, from Sorrel, or a person related to them from Sorrel, I should say, really, Sean Major. Um, and we took photographs of the attacks against our boat as it as it sat on blocks in this marina. Photographs of all the attacks, the pulling off of our tarp on the boat, the the wrecking of the uh, eyelets of the tarp, um, putting water in our starboard engine, um, uh, drilling holes in the back of my boat in the transom they uh took a grinder to the hall on just under the water line and started grinding a hole this was the uh the owner who was working with the this biker and the local mayor and the police on my boat okay trying to upset us so you know, it's anyway we uh, i informed rabbi bulka of the attacks on our boats jacob's goshen jacob's ladder that baldies in the provincial police, balds related to the chief of police who was recruiting them in, were attacking our boat at nighttime in their police rubber boats, putting water in the fuel tank of our boat, Jacob Scotian, which is the second boat we had to destroy my engine. Okay? But these are facts. You know, they're facts. So this was reported to Rabbi Balkan. Okay? In recorded messages. Um, I... You know, I left him messages wanting to speak with him, wanting to meet with him. I did not know that he had cancer. I had no clue. Um, at that time, I don't think he knew he did. But um, he died in New York City not too long ago um, with family members. And the point here is is that the, the synagogue turned against my wife and I. I had called several times asking them to, if we could bring our evidence and show it to uh, elder rabbis of that synagogue who are connected with the Nazi monster Stephen Harper, um, who was responsible for all these acts against our boats because he was the prime minister at that time, not uh, Trudeau. And um, I wanted Balka to know that, that, that while Harper and his party were loving up the Jewish community, getting all their votes and, and money supplies, uh, to run for office that Harper was destroying my wife and I and our boats using neo-Nazi colonials uh, that were that had moved into, into security okay then uh, we contacted the Israeli embassy here I contacted the Israeli embassy in the United States many many times in Washington um, called them you know kept calling them and finally they a lady named Rachel, who they denied even worked there later. That They said there was no such person as Rachel, but she told me her name was Rachel. She even told me she had lost family in the Holocaust, okay, at the Israeli uh, embassy in Washington. I called and she claimed her name was Rachel. She told me she was going to send an email uh, to the uh, Israeli embassy here in Ottawa. She said that they had to deal with this particular problem. Um, so she did that day, and I got a call from... Uh, Ambassador Nimrod Bark, and it was him because I heard him speaking here in Canada in the media to the to a government official, a public safety minister that he was buddy buddy with. Um, they both enjoyed a glass of wine together in the photograph I saw, um, and he called me, you know, on the phone at like the same day he got the email from the embassy in Washington, and he said, "Is this Mr. Fitzgerald?" I said, "Yes." He said, "Well, I'm calling from the um, Israeli embassy here. We would like you to bring down your documents. We want to have a look at them." And I was so pleased and relieved. I mean, I was very happy. And 
So it would take me some time to get them together. I was not expecting that uh, because uh, Canada kept managing to bribe countries. Hitler bribed a lot of governments. Canada was bribing governments, making payoffs uh, so that embassies here and member states refused to uh, realize our case and look into it and confront Canada. I mean, there's, you know, so... Uh, Basically, I figured it would take me a week to get the package together for them. The same one we gave the Russian Federation here, which they did receive and accept it on two occasions. Uh, they did this. Actually, and, and uh, we also gave them other documents as well, uh, throwing them through their, their Iron Gate fence, and they accept, seemed to accept it. So a week passed by, and I called the Israeli embassy, and I... Uh, I, a lady answered the phone there at the Israeli embassy. I said, my name is Daniel Fitzgerald. I, you, you know, I'm just calling you uh, to report something that happened to us because your embassy agreed to receive my material uh, uh, against Canada. So then uh, the lady said to me, I'm going to transfer you to security. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. So they transferred me to security. This Jewish Israeli security official picks up the phone. I told him that I had been given permission by the ambassador to bring down our material so they could review it. And he says to me, well, no, you can't do that. You can't bring your documents here. Okay, that really pissed me off because the Israeli consulate here had already received recordings from me about the attempted murder of our newborn in 2006 um, and the cover-up that ensued by Canada. Yeah, uh, the cover-up that ensued by Canada and then trying to uh, manipulate uh, the case into... Uh, my my wife or myself pulled our daughter's catheter out at the hospital in 2006. Um, and then the incident of, you know, us going to visit her. Um, she was under a belubrin light and an incubator in a ward all by herself, which I thought was strange. Uh, and we go in there and, you know, we find her temperature of her incubator was turned up to 104.92 degrees and she was screaming and crying and burning inside. We run in to open up the windows. Well, the nurse just simply runs, you know. Um, all these things were reported to the Israeli government, including their mission in New York. I gave the, the Israelis a rundown in 150 phoned-in messages to the mission in New York City. And the ambassador at that time was Danny Danon. And I think it was in the period of a week I left 150 messages for them, telling them and explaining to them that Canada has been, uh, its government's, have been using Nazi policies and there's been mass recruiting of uh, SS and Gestapo and so on within um, our entire security infrastructure. Um, when I finally got through to the Israeli embassy and or a mission to the UN in New York City, uh, a female answered the phone, right? And I told her, look, I called and left messages for Danny Danon, right? Uh, she turns around and says, to me, well, you know, I'm sorry, I have to go. I'm in a conference. She hangs up. Then the next thing I know, um, I'm calling back and I'm getting irritated and angry because I just don't understand because I'm reporting to them Nazi SS police here who, who recruited street people, the same as Hitler and the Gestapo did. This is admitted in the video I'm posting with this video that I got off of YouTube. This is, was the, the uh, Gestapo documentary is partially recorded in this video. Okay, so I, I'm making that clear. And so then what the Israeli mission did next is I was getting irritated and, and effing angry because this Zionist Israeli government and their embassies and their ambassadors, when they get reports of evidence of Nazism insecurity growing in a state where their embassy is and the victims have evidence to prove it, okay, one would expect the Israeli government to, to dig in and accept the evidence and help the victims and to go come forward against such a government. But you see, here was the thing. At that time, I did not know that uh, Canada's political parties, uh, federal and probably provincial as well, the Liberals and Conservatives, had Canadian Jews as MPs. I didn't know that, you see. I did not know. I didn't realize the shit of Nazi Jews was stacked that high. Okay? Sorry for the colorful metaphor. Now, 
in order for me to accuse, okay, uh, the Zionists of being Nazis, it's not just the fact that uh, the attack and the attempted, excuse me, not genocide, ICC or UN, but attempted extermination of the Palestinian people. Um, note that prior to that, okay, I had concluded and kept telling the Russian Federation here for the last year, along with their mission in New York, um, that uh, the Israeli government and the Zionists have Nazified with their NATO partners. That's what happened. And I had been stating this to the Russian Federation because I have enough evidence to prove that the Israeli government here in Washington and in the UN, the Israeli government deliberately covered up the fact that their American ally, as well as Canada and other NATO states, were indeed Nazifying their governments, Nazifying their opposition parties, Nazifying security. And the Israeli government in Washington, the UN, and here in Ottawa, covered it up. Now, stating that, what does that make them? I don't accuse Jews of being Nazis unless I have evidence to prove it. If I have overwhelming circumstantial evidence to prove that the Zionist government of Israel and all of their, uh, all of their uh, people who are citizens of NATO states, who are MPs and political figures in Gentile governments of NATO states, okay? I would not state that Melissa Landsman, for example, is a dirty, filthy SS Nazi female, unless it's true, okay? Polyev, Pierre Polyev, is a filthy Nazi because, you see, the conservatives are not so fine, along with the liberals, uh, because they rejected our case. The opposition in the House of Commons, based on crown law from the royal family, who has exclusive criminal and legal control of the government of Canada and their opposition parties in Parliament Hill to this very day, King Charles could turn around and he could shut down Parliament tomorrow just based on our evidence, okay, and have them all criminally investigated uh, by an outside, legitimate, uh, unnazified police force outside the country um, and have them all have the House of Commons completely closed, okay? King Charles has the power to do that. What I had determined in our case and our evidence was that the Liberal Party in the House of Commons, the Conservative Party in the House of Commons, the Bloc in the House of Commons here in Ottawa, the federal government and the NDP, all Nazified. Because they violated, uh, they violated the rules uh, of what they're supposed to represent the opposition parties in the House of Commons. The reason why we have opposition parties in the House of Commons here is so that Canadians with uh, minority cases, or thousands of Canadians with minor with a big case, or a hundred Canadians, or one Canadian who has a criminal case pre-existing against the government of Canada, no matter what political party that may be, has a right to reach out to the opposition parties and give them copies of their material against the prime minister and his cabinet and ministries and security. And they are supposed to use that information, review it, and then go into the House of Commons and confront the government with the victim's evidence. In our case, Oh, we had tons of it against the Liberals, the Conservatives refused, the NDP refused, the Bloc refused. Of course, we never went to the Bloc anyway, I wouldn't, um, because they come from the very province that committed most of the Nazi war crimes against my wife and I. Ontario, of course, uh, tried to gas me in a jail cell that I was in uh, for, sev like for several months. Um, tried to gas me and then play German polka music through the venom myself. And that jail was run by Nazi uh, pale white tall balls, along with the ones we saw in RCMP headquarters when I tried to turn in my murder report regarding this after I got out of jail. Uh, Nazi plainclothes bald in La Col, Quebec in 2012. Um, when I took in the journal my wife and I had made up and I had the 8x11 uh, color photographs 
of the consistent vandalization of our boat Jacob's Ladder in 2011-12 at Lassier de Champlain Marina in La Colle, Quebec being vandalized continually. When I took in the police report, I came back a few days later with the with the uh, 8 by 11 color photos of the vandalism against my boat. Uh, the man who came to the counter was in plain clothes. He was a pale, white, tall, bald. Okay. And he, I remember he said to me, well, I have to examine this because I don't, uh, you know, I don't speak English, he said. So clearly we have a collective of these pale, white, tall, balds throughout security. Um, and I can prove this who have targeted my wife and I. The government has recruited these Nazi balds uh, to stop my wife and I's case is what, what they've done. So, you know, this video is now one hour and eight minutes. I better stop because I have to upload the two of them to YouTube, which is going to cost some data. Um, we are going to pursue this. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, one of the things I note is that after, you know, years of phone calls, you know, phoning the UN, uh, phoning the Russian Federation for nine years, uh, you know, contacting the Russian Federation UN mission in New York City prior to Ambassador Vasily Nesbesnia, the previous ambassador, died of a heart attack. I've been calling there before he died for almost two years. Okay, so that should give you an idea of how many years I've been calling the Russian mission in the UN. Calls to the Chinese in the UN. Uh, they wanted our file four years ago. Miss Liu, who was executive secretary to the Chinese ambassador on the Security Council, the Chinese were very interested in our file, asked me to send it by email. Canada blocked me. Canada blocked all our emails to the ICC. Uh, Canada blocked our emails to member states of the UN. Canada blocked our letter mail to the White House, blocked our letter mail to President Obama, blocked our letter mail from being seen by Donald Trump. Uh, Canada blocked everything using security. Um, our emails weren't getting to the ICC. I called them. Uh, they never received anything. Um, we also sent emails to the High Commission of Human Rights in Geneva and never received them. They told me on the phone. The ICC prosecutor's office told me on the phone, we received nothing from you and your wife, even though we sent 30 of them. Uh, Canada, I believe, has blocked our emails from the Russian Federation mission in New York. They've blocked our emails to, um, or the U.S. has. It's one or the other. It's either the U.S. or Canada. The CIA blocking our emails to New York City. Okay. Uh, so, you know, this is coming to a head. Uh, now, all we've done is make phone communications. That's all we've done uh, is make telephone calls. You know, I very rarely send an email. It's a rarity with me now. Uh, I started making, trying to make comments on YouTube uh, at different uh, channels of people who, who uh, come on the main screen of YouTube, try to tell them about our case. Every time I do, um, these people don't get the email. They don't, they don't get the comments, you know. I made comments to Stephen Benoon of Israeli News Live, Paul Begley, who I can't frankly stand, don't want him involved anyway. Um, but in the past, I have uh, left comments on live shows of these people who in the United States citizens who have uh, who go on mainstream on YouTube um, with their videos and I approach them about our case by comment they never receive my comments okay and because Canada's and the US just are pulling things it's the two of them that's why like Steve Benoon of Israeli News Live years ago I contacted him by comment and he said that he was willing to interview my wife and I on a telephone call he replied to me from his iPhone, Stephen Badoon, okay? After that, I was blocked from contacting him. He wasn't receiving my comments or my emails. I recently went to World News Report today. This fellow named James runs that on YouTube. He, uh, he monitors things coming from space. That's, these are his uh, videos, essentially. And I, I sent him a comment telling him, you would not believe the case my wife and I have. I would like to do an a, uh, interview with you. OK. And then he commented back to me. He was very interested. And he said, well, you know, you can email me. So then I replied back to him, says, no, my email to you will be blocked unlawfully. My wife and I are living in forced exile here because of what I wish to report to you. He never got that email. So then when I then I finally sent him or not an email, but a comment. Then I sent him another comment saying, look, did you get my email yesterday? He responds, no, I didn't. So this is the American government uh, who have people running the YouTube headquarters in California and Canada who are pulling this garbage, okay? Canada is desperate. Uh, Canada, I, I state in this video that Canada is guilty. Canada admits its guilt, don't you?
You admit your guilt, Federal Government of Canada, you and your security, because you have spent millions, Mr. Prime Minister, millions, tens of millions, to silence my wife and I's case from escaping Canada and you being investigated. How many uh, countries Trudeau blackmailed you here to cover up our evidence? What did you have to pay, Mr. Prime Minister? You had to pay a lot. This is what I'm telling people. Um, now, like I said, for years, it's been mobile communications. It's been mostly telephone calls because clearly uh, Canada's government and their Nazi security have decided that every time I try to send out any uh, snail mail or emails regarding our case to some superiors outside the country who I feel um, are not Nazis, who are powerful, who can help us. Uh, Canada doesn't let those communications out of the country, period. Um, Canada also had YouTube, got the U.S. government to do them a favor. We allegate that the U.S. government in Washington contacted um, YouTube headquarters in California. Um, I have an account with YouTube. Um, and Canada needed YouTube to place all of my videos on YouTube in privacy mode. And I had no control over that, which resulted in um, people outside of Canada, in Canada, uh, being restricted from seeing my videos. And they're not allowed to leave comments when it when the uh, all the videos have been placed in private mode. This is something else they did. Yeah, so then how are we supposed to find our daughter if she's looking up? You know, so I'm just, this is what they've done. So now what we're left with here now in 2024 is I have to go out with my trailer and my signs um, and nail the government and nonstop all day, every day, uh, all over Ottawa, okay, until someone uh, stands up and says to the government, what did you do to these people? We want compensation. I told Trudeau we had to the end of September, um, I wanted $10 million in compensation for my wife and I. I wanted uh, the release of my two children, 18 and 17, Lara Danielle Fitzgerald and uh, Sebastian George Fitzgerald, uh, to have immediate access to us and for us to have immediate access to all information, where they are, what their names are, their addresses, their email addresses, uh, phone numbers and everything else, okay? Uh, I requested my brother Robert Scott Fitzgerald be arrested. Um, for violating criminally uh, and stealing my estate from my mother, okay? Those were the three requests. Uh, Trudeau never responded, period. Uh, I told him that if he didn't respond uh, by the positively, compassionately, by the end of September, that the we will require $100 million, okay? That it will go to 100 million. Now it's at 100 million. Now I'm going out with my signs very shortly. Um, to indicate this all over Ottawa. That's unfortunate. I mean, I understand there's global problems. I don't want to feel self-centered here. I understand that Russia and China have issues with the Ukraine and uh, what's going on in the Middle East. Russia has a lot of issues. President Putin does. Um, and China has a lot of issues with the West as well, the South China Sea over Taiwan. I'm on both countries' sides completely. I'm on Iran's side. Um, indeed, not the Israeli state government are Nazis, and they've been recruited into the Nazi fold of NATO states, and they're trying to keep that a secret. And this is the reason for the Hitler cloned attempted extermination of the entire Palestinian race by Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay? They're Nazis. I have enough evidence to prove the Jewish state, its government, uh, its uh, Jewish citizens born in NATO states who are actively elected politicians in territorial and federal state governments legislatures are recruited into the Nazi fold. Israel made it clear to me uh, over and over again, uh, their embassy, their mission in New York, their embassy in Washington, their embassy here, that they now work for the Nazis and that they will cover up any evidence of Nazification of Canada's federal and territorial governments and their legislatures and all of security. They have made that adamantly clear. So Israel, uh, and I'm talking about the Zionists of Israel, there needs to be a separation between the term Israel and the Jewish people and the Zionists of Israel. There is a stark difference. You cannot include all of the people of Israel who are not Zionists you only can attack the Zionist government um, and all their bottom-feeding Jews who are working for them, 
with Nazi governments of the West, okay? These you have to condemn, which is what I'm doing. Uh, there are, I want to make it clear, there are a lot of Jews, rabbi Jews, Christian Jews, uh, former um, elderly Holocaust victims who I love and adore, who have come forward, okay, claiming that they see no difference between the Holocaust against the Palestinians and the Holocaust that they suffered as children in the death camps. And these people have the audacity, this filthy little Nazi Pierre Polyev and his SS Sturman Fuhrer female SS Nazi sidekick, Melissa Landsman, um, condemning all of us, including us Jews. I'm partially Jewish, not entirely, but partially. Christians and rabbis and uh, elderly Holocaust victims, uh, we're their enemy. You see, Melissa Landsman and her, and her pipsqueak Nazi uh, Fuhrer and Sturmer leader, Mr. Polyev. All right. That's the end of this video. I got to go. I've got responsibilities today. I got to work on my trailer today and I'm late this afternoon. I got a lot to do. So I'll post these two videos now. I'll post uh, uh, this one maybe first or second. I'm not sure. Let it upload. Um, I'm not sure what title I'm going to pin on it, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but this this video as well as the other one I did is is uh, directed directly to the Russian embassy here and the eyes and ears of Ambassador Stepanov. Okay. These two videos are for the UN and the Russian representation to the United Nations and also Moscow, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, my good friend and colleague, a dear friend, President Vladimir Putin, and also another dear friend and colleague, Mr. Medvedev. The Russians are right, and I am right in line with them. Their case of accusing the West of Nazism and my case of accusing the West of Nazism are essentially the same and are intermixed. And indeed, uh, the many statements I gave the Russian Federation mission in New York over the phone regarding the proofs of Nazi Canada's government and security and military, along with NATO, uh, I would assume that the Russians used a lot of my information, along with their own, to have enough circumstantial evidence themselves to conclude that they're fighting a war against Nazis in the Ukraine. That is, you have to have Nazi Western politicians um, in NATO in order to support Nazi SS type militia in the Ukraine. There's no doubt about that. Anyway, Shalom, thank you very much.